week or something. Yeah, some of us maybe not sure if we want to be here. It's okay. I was in high school too. I understand. Um, but I'm very excited you guys are here and that like I got here right before the storm or after about before and then I get here in North Dakota and it's like after the storm. So I I don't know. I was telling Miss Nikki, she's one of your state staff members. I'm like, I think North Dakota knew I was coming. Like they're like, all right. We have to like shape everything up, like get ready for cold. But no, I'm so excited to be here. Um, I'm just gonna wait for the thumbs up because I know we'll start our live stream. Awesome. Okay, so we're ready to go. But how is everybody today on this Thursday morning? Good. Okay, I think we could have a little bit more enthusiasm than that. How is everybody today? Nice to hear. I'm feeling that way as well. Um, but good morning. My name is Cole Bearlocker. I know it's kind of a weird last name, so like think of like a grizzly bear and then just like jamming it in the locker of a hallway. Like that is how you say my name. I am from Washington State, so a little bit out, out of my element here with the cold, but I've actually really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm currently serving as the national FFA president. So I get to celebrate FFA week this week with North Dakota. Uh, I've been traveling around the country, um, but I'm so one of my favorite things to do. Anybody else like to travel in here? Okay, a lot of us. Yeah, that's the traveling is very exciting for me. I love getting on the road, getting on a plane, going somewhere new, seeing new things. Um, and as a national officer, I do a lot of travel. So I've been to Kentucky, I've been to Washington, D.C. I'm going places like Florida, New Hampshire, New Mexico. So I'm going all across the country. But it was this trip for FFA week that made me remember something that I kind of forgot. See, I've been flying in a lot of airplanes. But me and Miss Becky, my handler, we actually drove from Indianapolis to Springfield, Illinois. And it reminded me they were not there. They're in a different Springfield, though. The Simpsons are, yeah. Um, but that road trip reminded me that I prefer driving in a car way more than I like to fly in a plane. Can anybody else relate to that? Any of us would much rather go on like a car road trip than a plane trip. Some of us are like that? Yeah, no, I am the exact same way. I could get in a car and go for you know, 13 hours nonstop. That is my ideal trip. And so when you know, I was thinking about what I wanted to, to say here at Wapatan, that was something that stuck in mind. I want to go on a road trip with all of y'all. Is anybody else down for that, going on a road trip? Some of us sound a little hesitant. Let's try that one more time. How many of us want to go on a road trip? Yeah, awesome. Okay, so we, now, with every trip, we have to start with our transportation. So let's take 30 seconds when I say Flamingo. We're gonna turn to a partner and we're gonna come up with a, a vehicle that has wheels that's gonna get all of us transported, transported from point A to point B. All right? We have to, well, it can't, not an airplane, we're looking for like a motorized, vehicle with wheels, all right? It has to get all of us on it. Ready? So we're going to turn to a partner and figure out one of those vehicles. Ready? Flamingo. You guys have some ideas? Okay, okay. Awesome, okay, let's wrap those up a little bit. All right, so I, I want some people to share what mode of transportation. I saw your hand first, what are we taking? Okay, so right now we have a lawnmower with a bunch of trailers. Let's get one more, another person, yes. A party bus, okay, okay. One more, yes. A what? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. A fire truck, okay. So those are our three options, people. We have a lawnmower with a bunch of trailers, a party bus, or a fire truck. We are gonna vote on this right now. We're a democracy. We can figure this out. So if you wanna take a lawnmower with a bunch of trailers, let me hear an, oh yeah. Okay, okay, so maybe not a ton of people for the lawnmower. Okay, if you wanna take a party bus, let's get a, uh-huh. Okay, party bus pretty high up there right now. And our final one, a fire truck. If you want to take a fire truck, let's hear uh, just a shout. We're going to scream. If you want to take a fire truck, let's...
Okay, so it's kind of a tie between a party bus and a fire truck, and we need to have a tiebreaker. So if you want to take the party bus, let's hear it right now. Okay, if you want to take a fire truck, let's hear it right now. Okay, nice. I think the fire truck won. Let's give a round of applause for our fire truck. All right, so we're going to draw that up here. No, we're all in this. We're we are all in this fire truck together. I'm just like. Awesome. So we have our fire truck. Now the next thing we need to talk about for our trip is the supplies, right? Every trip has supplies. So let's again turn to a partner. We're gonna take 10 seconds this time and come up with one very specific supply that we need to make sure this trip is a success. Ready, flamingo. All right, let's wrap up those conversations in three, two, one. Awesome. Okay, let's get some people to share. What are some supplies we're, we're bringing? Let's get some new hands. Yes. Okay, food. What type of food? Did we talk about that? A cow. We're bringing a whole cow on this trip? Okay. So we got a, we got a cow. Sorry, pardon my cow. I did not take art in high school. Actually, I'm impressed with myself. Okay. Okay, what else are we bringing on this trip? A supply. I want to get some new hands. Some new people haven't shared yet. What about somebody in the back row back here? Yes. Okay, a PlayStation and a TV. You know what, this is our trip, right? We're gonna need some entertainment. We're gonna draw a smiley face. Awesome, okay, we need one more supply, yes. A speaker, love that idea. Awesome. So we have our transportation, we have our supplies, and we need one final thing for this trip. We need a destination. Do you all want to know where we're going? Let me hear it. We have Hawaii, we have Alabama. No. We are going somewhere way better than all of those places. Can I get a drum roll, please? On the 2022 North Dakota FFA Week road trip, we are going to the National FFA Center in Indianapolis. I know some of us don't sound that excited, but trust me, the FFA Center is probably the coolest place on the planet, if I do say so myself. See, uh, yeah, actually, yes we can. Staff members at National FFA are huge NASCAR fans, yeah. Um, but the FFA Center happens to be one of the coolest places on the planet, and here's why. It's because right now, it's my home away from home. This is where my teammates and I, we, we work, we go to board meetings, we develop workshops and speeches, go to trainings. It's a place where we hang out and help, uh, help you know, make time so that we can be national officers and go on the road and do these amazing things. But whenever I'm at the National FFA Center, it always reminds me of three things. Or, yeah, three things. Premier leadership, personal growth, and career success. These three things are, are ideas that us as FFA members can grasp onto to help launch our journey, to help us launch our road trip. So we're gonna break down those three things today in the time we have. So like I said, the first one is premier leadership. We can look at premier leadership kind of like our mode of transportation. It's gonna help us get from point A to point B. Now, as an FFA member, I remember my very first time I got to experience Premier Leadership. I was an eighth grader, and I actually wasn't an FFA member yet. And it was an early Saturday morning, and I remember my brother bursting into my room and saying, Cole, Grandpa wants to talk to you. He went ahead and threw the house phone at me, and I was you know, still a little groggy in the morning, just getting up. And I picked up the phone and was like, hey, what's up, Grandpa? Oh, you, you want me to go where? The Washington FFA State Convention? Isn't that like a club for farmers or something? Yeah, I mean, oh, I, get, I know you really want me to go. Ah, I don't know. 
okay, fine, I'll get dressed, I'll get ready. You know that feeling when somebody asks you to do something and it's the right thing, but you don't necessarily want to do it, but you kind of get guilted into doing it anyways? Yeah, that was this moment for me. So I got out of bed, I got dressed, I got my clothes on, and I was ready to go. And, and within 10 minutes, there was my Grandpa Gary outside of the house in his beat-up red Ford pickup truck. Yeah, Gary and his red Ford. I know, I know. Sorry if that offends anybody. There might be some Chevy fans in here. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so my Grandpa Gary was outside, and I hopped in the car, and we headed down the road towards Pullman, Washington, where the state convention is held in Washington. And um, I remember my grandpa was really serious in this car ride, and he was telling me, you know, Cole, this isn't just any convention. This is an FFA convention, and it's a really, really big deal. Not just because it's FFA, but because this convention, your cousin Luke is running for state office. How many, how many of us have ever met a state officer before? Yeah. Pretty exciting, right? But as an eighth grader, I did not know what he was talking about. My grandpa says, Cole, if Luke's elected, he's going to take an entire year off of his life. He's going to dedicate it to FFA, and he's going to travel around the state advocating for agriculture. And I was just sitting in the passenger seat, smiling and nodding. I didn't, like I said, I didn't know what he was talking about. I was kind of thinking, like, who is crazy enough to take an entire year off of their life and dedicate it just to FFA? Like, you have to be a little bit cuckoo to do that, right? <laughs> See, the irony is that's literally what I'm doing right now. Um, but so I was kind of like, yeah, I do not know what he's talking about. But within 10 minutes, we were in Pullman, pulling up to Beasley Coliseum. And I remember looking at this herd of FFA members in their blue jackets walking up the steps. I was sitting in the car, and I was a little nervous because I did not look like any of them. I didn't have a blue jacket on. I didn't have black slacks. And so I was kind of nervous going into Beasley because I knew I was going to stand out like a sore thumb. Uh, but despite that, I got out of the car, and I trailed my grandpa into the Coliseum. And as we were walking in the door, we were engulfed by a sea of FFA members, just tons and tons of blue corduroy jackets. I remember looking around the entire arena and feeling like there was a million people wearing this jacket. And instead of feeling excluded, I felt like I wanted to be just like them. I wanted that blue jacket. I wanted to fit in. And the convention was awesome. It was one of the coolest things I've ever experienced, something that I know I will remember for the rest of my life. But my highlight of convention was watching my older cousin Luke up on stage. You see, he went from my cousin to a superstar. Luke gave his top 10 speech and was later elected state office. And that's when I really saw what premier leadership can do for a person. Right? When we work hard, when we have the right intentions and push ourselves, we open doors. After that convention, I walked to my cousin Luke, and I said, you know, how did you do it? How did you become a state officer? That's so cool. And he told me one thing. He said, Cole, just say yes. See, in this moment, my cousin Luke helped me unpack the power of just saying yes. See, he went from a member just like me to a state officer because he took control of the opportunities that were being provided to him. I reflected on that day, and looking back, I did just that. While at first, I wasn't sure, when my grandpa called me, I said yes. I got, out of my, I got out of my bed, I woke up early, and I went to convention. When we pulled up, while yes, I was a little intimidated by all the blue jackets, I said yes by getting out of my car and walking into Coliseum. At the end of that Saturday, I said yes to myself by wanting to become an FFA member. Sometimes I look back and I think, what would have happened if I would have said no? Chances are I might not be here today speaking to you. The power of yes can lead to an infinite, an infinite role of opportunities for us as FFA members and us as students to uh, participate in. So if you're learning anything from me today, I want you to take control of that and look for the power in just saying yes. Awesome. So now we have our mode of transportation. Now we need to look at our supplies, right? In FFA, we can compare that to personal growth. Yeah, personal growth isn't always the easiest thing to do. It takes a lot of reflection and discipline to really put ourselves out there. But for me, I got to experience personal growth firsthand as a freshman in high school. Now, how many of us have ever competed in creed speaking before? All right, we got a couple of us. Awesome. See, as a freshman, I was also competing in creed speaking. And maybe you haven't heard of creed before, but essentially, it's a five-paragraph speech that you memorize, you present it to judges, you ask questions, it's pretty competitive, um, I'm sure in North Dakota as well as in Washington. But I'm an extremely competitive person. How many of us are competitive people? 
Yeah, there's a lot of hands there. I see, yeah. So, like, sports, all the things, I was competitive. If I'm doing anything, it's because I want to win, right? I want to do my best. I want to prove my family proud and, and show people that I'm capable. Yeah, I'm very competitive. And so Freshman Colt, like I said, took Creed very seriously. You see, because there was only one year in FFA that I could do Creed, and it was my freshman year. So I knew it was, it was make or break. I had to go all out. I had to do all the things. And so um, there was one day in particular at the District 6 Creed speaking competition in a little town called Asotin that I was feeling pretty cool and confident, right? I was, I was here at Districts. This was the next stop to get to state. And I, I was really feeling like I had what it took to qualif qualify for that next level. When all of a sudden, the entire holding room got quiet and the lights started to flicker and there was lightning in the background and in through the door burst my or in through the door burst my arch nemesis Lauren Stubbs yeah Lauren she had her blonde hair pulled back out of her face her jacket was crisp and her was out for blood she didn't come to this freshman creed speaking competition to lose she came to win now, I was pretty nervous, right? I could see, I could see this girl over here, and like she looked like she had everything she needed to, to be successful in this day. And so I, I walked to the back corner of the room. I opened up the curtain of a welding booth, and I stepped in, and I started scheming. I was like, all right, cool. You got to pull out all the stops. You got to do all the things. You got to be perfect. You got to nail this creed. You got to beat Lauren Stubbs, or else she's not going to see you as competition, and you're going to lose, and your entire family, everyone you know, is going to disown you. Yeah, I was pretty honed in on this speech. I knew I needed to give it my all. But as I was thinking through all these things, I started to stack pressure on myself. I started to psych myself up for this creed speaking competition to something that was way bigger than what it had to be. And I was really, really nervous. And so when the, the judge, judges finally called my name, I opened up the curtain of the welding booth. I walked into the speaking room. I took my spot in the center. And I presented the FFA creed. <clears throat> The FFA Creed by E.M. Tiffany. All right, the first paragraph was going great. I was hitting the words. I was saying the things. I was doing it all. I could tell the judges were a little bit impressed. All right, second paragraph. Okay, here we go. That judge over there smiling. I think they're impressed. Hey, I'm kind of impressed with myself. Yeah, good job, Cole. Okay, third paragraph. Let's do it. All right, okay, that word. Yes, got it. Awesome, nailing it. All right, let's get to the fourth paragraph. Okay, ready? Um, <laughs> fourth paragraph. How did that one go again? Um, I believe in less dependence on bargaining. Oh, wait. Um, less dependence. embarrassed. I couldn't believe I just messed up on such a simple sentence. I'd been practicing this, practicing this speech for months to perfection. I had totally failed, and I'd let Lauren Stubbs beat me, and I had let down my family. And so when I called my, my uncle, I told him those exact things. I said, I'm so sorry. I feel like I've let you down. And my uncle told me something next. He said, my first step to personal growth as an F. member because I failed things didn't go the way I thought they would and I messed up but luckily I had some pretty cool supplies and resources to help me on my journey I had an uncle who's an ag teacher who cared about me when I called him he helped me reflect on that situation and figure out what I needed to do better to grow so my junior year when I was competing in prepared public speaking rather than sitting in those holding rooms stacking the stress and the pressure on myself I'd come up with a pretty cool strategy to not get so fixated on this competition. Instead of stressing myself out, I was going to color. That's right. In every single holding room I brought with me, my Marvel Avengers coloring book. It was something that I did in holding rooms to remember what FFA competitions are supposed to be about. Growing and having fun. It's, you know, winning isn't everything, and that Marvel coloring book, it helped me, and it helped me be way more successful as a public speaker. Heck, that coloring book was even with me when I was running for national office. It's something that, again, has reminded me 
how, how we as FF members need to conduct ourselves and how we can use an opportunity like failure to grow. On our journey in life, we're going to run into some potholes every now and then. We're going to have to pull off to the road and use some of our resources to help us uh, fix the situation and head back on our journey. For me, this was one of those situations. I learned from my mistakes, I used my resources, and I became successful. Now, our third and final thing that we need to have with us on our journey is our destination. Each and every one of us have a different destination, but if we utilize all those resources or all these other uh, steps, we can really hone in on our skills that are gonna help make this more of a possibility. See, like I said, career success is where our organization and being involved is pointing us. And I like to think of FFA as kind of like the GPS that helps us get there, right? It's telling us the right turns, maybe the right experiences or opportunities that we need to take to get to our destination as quickly as possible. Now for me, this was my supervised agricultural experience project. You might have heard these called SAEs before. How many of us have an SAE project? Awesome. So my SAE project, uh, like I said, I'm from a very rural area in southeastern Washington. It kind of reminds me actually of Wapaton a little bit. I'm surrounded by agriculture. There's wheat, wheat farmers and there's cattlemen, um, but I actually didn't grow up in a production agricultural setting. So I grew up in town, literally feet away from a wheat field. So it always kind of felt like I was observing the agriculture around me. I wasn't necessarily pay, playing a part or a role within it. And so my freshman year, when I saw what all my friends were doing in my chapter, you know, working wheat harvest or showing cattle at the local county fair, I decided that I was going to replicate that. So I started showing market lambs, and I started that my freshman year. And I loved showing market lambs. It was so much fun and very exciting, but I ran into a little bit of a challenge. I didn't see market lambs and raising livestock as my destination. And so my senior year, I decided to make a little bit of a switch. See, COVID had shut down my entire school year, and I was sitting at home, and I decided to download some graphic design software on my iPad. I started making memes about COVID-19 and, and what it was like finishing my senior year from the parking lot of my high school. And I started sending them to my friends and my family, and pretty soon they started sending them to their friends and their family. Within a matter of days, uh, a local lady in town named Sue reached out to me and wanted me to update some of her logos for her business. A light bulb lit up in my head. Hey, I'm actually really interested in this. Maybe this could be my destination. Pretty soon, I developed my own graphic design company. I started that as my SAE project and was able to build a client base that helped me understand where I can see my future in agriculture. I learned that our industry isn't just about production. There's scientists, researchers, engineers, graphic designers who are helping to propel American agriculture to the future. Like I said, each and every one of us have a different mode of transportation, different supplies, and maybe a different destination. But FFA, premier leadership, personal growth, and career success is what's going to help us fulfill our journey. All of us belong here in the Blue Jacket. See, American agriculture needs everybody, their backgrounds, their experiences, their knowledge, and all the differences that we have to help us develop a new dimension of our industry. When we're able to hone in on our story and get involved, we're able to build a brighter and better future for our industry, for ourselves, and for the FFA. Thank you all so much for joining me today, whether it's in person or virtually. I hope you were able to take something away from my speech, and I really appreciate y'all for being active listeners and participating. So thank you so much, and um, 